Hello guys, Mitko here from DN Models. Some might say, oh no, another Spitfire, not again. Others though will be very excited to see the kit featured in this video in the next upcoming minutes. The more Spitfire kits there are, the better, some might and probably will think. The truth is right there and I agree to both of these eventual statements, but this specific Spitfire serves as an exception to that. Actually, it is something very different. Generally, due to the overly many spits on the market in all possible scales, this is an annoying subject to some extent. However, that should be taken alongside with the fact that there are currently few of them that are at an extraordinarily high level as scale models and stand well above all others on the market. So eventually, with that in mind, no surprises are expected. But not quite. And Edward are the living proof. From all the spits available, two are very important to set a good basis for this review here and should be reckoned with, so to speak. This is exactly what we're going to do and build our case over it. First one of those is the 30 second scale Mark IX Spitfire from Tamiya, which is considered as the bar in the business and everybody aims to achieve that level. This model, both as a kit and as a Spitfire representation, is unbelievably good. With its release, Tamiya darkened the sky for everybody else. That should be taken with a grain of doubt, because this 30 second scale kit is a mid version of the Spit, while the one we're talking about here is an early one. But more on that in a little bit. Next in line, again, is with Tamiya and their recent quarter scale release, which is at a lower level in terms of detailing, and that is mostly due to its scale, but also very accurate and very good overall. It has a fit that is at an orgasmic level and both its price and availability are quite satisfactory. Also, this 48 scale Spitfire should be considered as a direct contender here in this video specifically because it is too an early Spitfire and in the same scale as the one we are reviewing as well. Now, Let's finally land at the kit in the video here. Edward's new early Spitfire line of kits, represented in this video specifically by an early Mark II. Here's a short disclaimer. To save you some time watching this video, I will give you the conclusion right here. I believe that this Edward Spitfire here is the best in any scale, not because it is better than Tamiya 32nd, but because detail-wise is quite comparable with it. If we compare it with their 48 scale kit, well, with Edward we might be having some potential fit issues and even if we don't, Tamiya is unbeatable in that regard. But nevertheless, with this Edward release, we have a whole new level of detail achieved in quarter scale in which, to be frank, Tamiya 48 scale Spitfire fades, and rather quickly too. Also, it is important to say that none of the kits mentioned above is a letdown in any way, but instead they have different upsides oriented towards different types of modeling needs. But again, I think this is the best of them all. There it is, if you don't want to learn anything more, you can switch to another video right now. For the rest of you, let's dig a bit deeper. Spitfire as a historical achievement in aviation is more than a milestone, especially the early versions. The early Spits were really good and they were considered superior to the German fighters even by the Germans, or at least significant part of them. Spitfire is quoted as the most recognizable World War II fighter, although I don't agree with that necessarily. Putting the Mustang at the first place and spitting 109 at second. However, 
even though late Spitfires were already exhausting the design as well as being overshadowed by the early jets and rocket planes, the early Spits are truly one of the most recognizable and also one of the very best fighter propeller driven planes of the Second World War. From a modeling standpoint, having a model of such an important vehicle is almost mandatory and nowadays with the technology and fantastic quality of scale models, having a kit of it with superb details and accuracy is a definite must. Edward released the new line of early spits in 2020, and this is one of the first to see the light of day. It is also one of the first featured in the new colored boxing, which I find to be more serious than the previous orange ones, and also more appropriate for the important subjects Edward are addressing. Let's not forget they have a beautiful lines of uh, BF109E, ME109G, uh, late Spitfires, Focke Wolf 190s, and lately, brilliant Mustangs as well. First thing I want to do is say a few things about the box. This is what a box should look like, and this is how much of a volume in respect to the contents inside the box should have. There has been a lot of fuss about that lately, especially after I mentioned explicitly in my SU-33 opinion that overflowing boxes are a bad thing. They are, and for more than one reason, but especially with such kit as the Spitfire here, where you can add brass in or similar products, this box offers enough space to cram everything inside and store it up until the time for the building comes, which we all know is usually not right away after we purchase it. If you decide to stay on the out of the box side of things still, everything inside is safe and secure and no hustle is needed when you open it, take everything out and put it back again. Plenty of space. On the bottom of the box you can find the decals, instructions, masks and photo ed sheet. Instruction sheet gives a promising start with a decently large description of the Spitfire including some history, some facts and some additional information specific to the Mark II featured in this box. I really enjoyed how Edward approached this. It is not dry matter to swallow nor it is annoying. It is rather a pleasant quick read and can help with some additional understanding of the aircraft. Then on, everything is the typical Edward, but with that said, and the fact that it is a very good both paper quality and design of the steps wise, I have to add that Edward could have done better using the experience of the leaders on the market, adding specific info about the elements inside. Let me give you a specific example. In the intro, where the historical facts are described, Edward found a place to put some information about the additional parts specific for this version of the set. I won't say more because I will spoil the pleasure when you get the kit eventually. However, on the building step concerning that specific area, I don't see the same or similar description, which would have been nice. If companies, especially serious players like Edward, start to add such information, the knowledge will start spreading faster than usual, and instead of talking only building and weathering techniques at the shows, which is the most discussed subject, we'll get to see more knowledgeable people discussing the real things and then one with the embedded thirst for knowledge and curiosity in us humans this will create a whole new generation of modelers, not only better in painting and weathering, but also knowing a lot more for the subjects they are doing. I always give an example with Zukimura. I think they hit the right spot with that. It would have been sweet if we had this with Edward Spitfire. That actually concerns Spitz more than the rest since there are a lot to know about this plane and there are myriad of variation that can be explored. Wings, canopies, propellers, engine variations, stuff like that. Now, 
the masks and the photo etch are next. The masks are made from kabuki tape and as we know are a must for a modern kit. Nice to have them out of the box here. The photo etch features cockpit panel elements which are impressive and in general is at very high level as we know from Edward's previous lines. Their experience is almost unbeatable especially with colored etched parts. I must add here that it is a very tempting add-on to this out-of-the-box offering, but I personally would not hesitate to get myself a resin option for this section and, as a matter of fact, for some other sections of this kit too. Edward offers a wide line of resin improvements, most important as uh, usual being the engine and the cockpit. If you put those in this kit, you will eventually create an unbeatable miniature at your local modeling show. For the not so devoted Spitfire fans as myself, this is solved with the P set here. But for the fanatics, well, my fellow maniacs, the resin is there and you can get it at a good price too. Edward took care of that. The plastic with this kit is stunning. But before I get to that stunningness, I will walk you through the regular elements typical for the most of the decent kits out there. Edward's quality of moldings has improved throughout the years. I've been recently working with their 32nd scale 109E, getting some mask measurements, and I have to add that what I see in this kit here is far better. It is cleaner, different looking plastic, and a lot more crisp detail. That goes for everything in this kit. Start from the large parts, going through the small ones, and ending at the clear sprues. Everything is better. The clear sprue itself features a bunch of canopy variants, but we all know the reason for that. Edward will not stop until they are not satisfied exploring the early Spitfire line in every aspect that they see fit and their perspective is quite wide. It is visible from the pictures that the clear parts are very good and even though I've seen better, I must say that this is a brilliant work on their part. Having praised the clear parts, I have to add also that Spitfire cockpit is visible mainly through the side door usually, not through the transparent material, but nevertheless, in this case, everything looks great. As for the smaller and not so important parts, and by that I mean not important at the first glance, we have a stunning level of detail which, if treated with care, will transform itself into a brilliant miniature. It seems that Edward paid attention to everything that the Mullers demanded or complained about throughout the last couple of decades. It is true that Tamiya already did that with their 32nd scale kit of the Spitfire, but let's not forget, this is quarter scale here. It is quite smaller. And it is rather unbelievable how good everything looks. Now, to the really impressive parts of this kit. Lately, we see good panel lines and many rivets and when it comes to that, I always try to remember my fellow modelers that on the real aircraft, rivets are not recessed. They are rather flushed or bulged. When you fill your recessed rivets on your model with wash, you kind of get to the point of making them look flushed, which even though not very accurate and not very realistic, looks intriguing. Here, Edward punched everybody in the face and did it Dyson style. We have absolutely new level of riveting featuring best of both worlds mulling wise. Where I am currently, I have no Spitfire in close proximity to go and check out to compare, but in a couple of months I will do that, especially to assure myself that they did it perfectly which I assume they did. However, 
From where I'm sitting right now, this is the same level of orgasmic pleasure as the fit that the Mia offers with their Spitfire. Just with this here, it is all about the model surfaces. With the types of rivets embedded in the plastic, a whole new approach of weathering can be applied here, combining the techniques that are rarely seen combined before. That, especially for the experienced modelers, is a gift that no one can substitute and overall makes this Spitfire looks like a Christmas every day of your building and weathering process. This unfortunately have a downside, and that is the fact that the liquid glue used mostly with such fine kits is quite aggressive, thus it can damage or even flush some of those rivets here. This requires elevated tension, and one should have in mind that this kit with this surface is actually a lot more fragile if you want to preserve everything you get from the factory and transform it into a completed model. That is scary to some extent if you ask me. Imagine trying to send something or fix an error. Those little details are tiny and delicate and this, all this, it is core to scale, it's 148, it's unbelievable. It is actually amazing what that small Czech company did. I always admired the Czechs like a nation, every now and then finding them to be one of the gems of European nations, and this kit proves my point. Just for a moment, leave aside this spit as a result of Edward's hard work and imagine the thinking behind it, the idea in someone's head that led to this surface here. This is genius, that surface alone could make this kit a leader in one's book. But I won't spoil it more for you, you will scratch your head long enough when you get this kit in your hands, trust me on that. Next are the decals, or the decals. The decals are two pieces and it seems that Edward did them. My experience with their decals has always been satisfactory and I trust that this will be no exception here. With that said, in my opinion, the roundels and the large letters should be masked out and painted, especially with those fine details on the surface. I am contemplating a set of masks dedicated solely to early Spitfires, but at this point I have not enough information to make it worth it for most of the early versions altogether, and in the same time I don't want to make it only for a specific kit, even though the versions included in this one here are plenty. We'll see, I might give it a go. Now, the versions I just mentioned are the typical Spitfire. Two of them are available in general, one is with the earth tone camouflage, the other one is with the bluish one. The camouflage is almost identical, which, as far as my knowledge goes, is because pitfires were painted using stencils. However, there are some slight differences with one of the blue options, so just to be certain, stick to the reference pictures if you can do that. If you ask me, when building this pitfire, one should go with the earth tones. Eventually, the split bottom where you get half black and the other one light. One of the best pitfires that I've ever seen built was placed on a mirror and displayed like that, solely a mirror, nothing else as a base, just because the muller who made it put special attention to the lower surfaces and made it look really good. The reasons for that are many, but I will hint you with two things. This specific modeler is a friend of mine, but most importantly a pilot in a major European airline, Red Tails to hint you a bit, and when doing his pre-flight he always look at the bottom of the plane. That is every day. When you're flying a big bird you're limited to the lower surfaces, you don't get a ladder to check from above. He somewhat took it from there and transformed it into his Spitfire, which actually was better at the bottom than at the top. Well, 
It was good all around, but the bottom seemed better. Now, remember what I just said a minute ago. Two colors, black and white, are a distinctive feature of the early Spitfire, and if you manage to pull this off and eventually place it on the mirror, you will really make it shine, especially with this level of detailing that Edward presented. By the way, the model that I am talking about was also in 48 scale, but in terms of paint options, even though only two camouflage variants here, there are markings for more than two planes, and I think that is plenty considering the standards of Spitfire's appearance. As a conclusion, I will go back to the beginning and I will mention that I truly believe that this kit is better than Tamiya's 30 second scale. If you're still wondering why, I will tell you. The scale model kit, in its essence, is supposed to be a smaller version of the real thing. In my opinion, the smaller you get, the more hard it becomes to keep the proportions of thickness and accuracy and detailing too. Probably, 70 second scale is acceptable, but I trust that in terms of single engine World War II fighters, you cannot go below 48 scale without some compromises. Even with that scale, there is rarely a kit that will be produced without a compromise, at least here or there. Now, this scale model here is a refutation of the statement. I didn't see a single issue that is worse compared to Tamiya's 30 second scale kit, and if they are equal in appearance, with the sole difference being their size, well then Edward is more of an achievement in my book. Maybe, eventually the movable surfaces that Tamiya is offering, but I don't need to remind you that the scale models are static and are not supposed to be moved not more than you move a painting on your wall. Let's mention tanks. I can imagine someone uh, running their workable tracks every couple of days over their carpet just because Rifle model made their Panzer IV with workable tracks. So I don't think movable parts of the Mia Spit are essential in that case of comparison. Also, I won't even mention the spices that Edward offer in terms of photo etch and resin as an aftermarket, which can really make this kit unbeatable at any modeling show, no matter what scale you compare it with. Let's just compare out-of-the-box contents and price. We get almost equal results, but in this specific case, I bought my Tamiya for exactly four times than the Spitfire here. But what is left then for the other 48 scale kits, even Tamiya's newest release? Well, not much, I'll tell you. At least not for the professionals. It is not surprising why this kit is labeled Profi Pack. It justifies its label to the maximum. While Tamiya Spit in 48 scale might be a pleasure ride, this thing here can really outshine it no matter out of the box or filled with aftermarket. What really surprises me is the fact that Tamiya are behemoth in the scale modeling world, while Edward are rather a small company compared to them. Even with that, they managed to pull it off and beat the Mia by a little and in both scales altogether. Two words with one stone, so to speak. But again, all the three mentioned are beautiful kits and each deserves its place on the market. Just if you ask me, this is the best of them all. As I've said with their 30 second scale Spitfire release, to me, a darkened disguise for everybody out there, especially on the Spitfire scene. Now, Edward showed the world that they too have something to say about that. And even though the skies nowadays are even darker for the Spitfire manufacturers and the ones who are contemplating new releases, the sun is shining brightly for the modelers, actually brighter than ever. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this review, and I will see you in the next one.